<laughs> so that was sort of our working name that we came up with because we had this idea for a like universal like converter thing and we just sort of threw this name on there because we needed a name for the Arcos proposal and it's sort of followed us ever since. So none of us particularly liked it. So we decided that we were going to get rid of it. So now we have a new logo, a new name. So this one is something you can actually say, convola. It's a lot, it's two syllables as opposed to three words. So it's a big step in the right direction. So that, that's, that was the first big thing that we did. Um, I guess we should introduce ourselves. I'm John Nathan. Frank Kersky. I'm um, Jonathan Chris. I'm Alex Hunt. So, yeah, so now we're con a lot and we're simplifying the world's formats. So, for those of you who haven't heard one of our previous um, discussions, basically we're trying to build a converter for everything. Um, it's a file conversion tool, but what sets it apart is it's not a music file conversion tool or a video file conversion tool. It's an everything file conversion tool. We already support music, video, documents, and images. And by writing an XML file, you can add support for anything that there's already a converter for. Um, basically, we use other programs. Um, we started from the sort of the Unix model of you have a little command line program that you pass some arguments and it does something. So we wrote, we have this, X, this standard where you just like write a little XML file that tells our program how to call that program. And then we can convert that file format. So, yeah, basically, that's. What that's well, it allows you to convert uh, all different kinds of formats through one front end. Yeah. So it's really simple for people to use. One thing we get is some kind of crazy things. Like, it's actually technically possible to turn like a Word document into an image now, which does have use. Next time you're making a website, you can put your, in, you can put your Word document, like the first page of your Word document is just on your website. <laughs> because it, it, it'll take a doc and then turn it into a PDF and then turn it into like a PNG image which is crossing, it's crossing sort of the border, but because individual steps are possible, it'll chain them together and figure out how to do it for you. Um, and we're really cross-platform now. We have an OSX release. It's not particularly native, um, because I don't really understand bundles. I just had a Mac for my job this summer, so I got it running. Um, but, so yeah, we run on, we currently run on OSX, Mac, and Linux, and the backend, our only dependencies are Boost if you're building the back end, and then Qt if you want to do a graphical front end. We also have a command line front end. We'll talk about that later. So, um, our last presentation was last semester. So since then we've had a release, and then a lot more work since the release. So first of all, our point three release is out. It is um, infinitely better than anything we had before. It's actually more or less usable. Um, there's a known bug with the Linux one that you, it will fail if you don't already have the configuration file directory created, because then not to create it. But if you create that folder, then it works. Um, and there's installers for Linux and Windows, and there's a Mac DMG that has a PKG installer in it. So um, that's on our website. But we've had like a million changes. So our back end. Um, Last time we didn't have it didn't work properly. Like we were talking about searching formats. That's just a depth first search on the shortest path, and it was wrong. So now it's right. Which means that we don't go through like six formats when converting between two audio files. Uh, so what John is talking about here. I'm not sure he really got the point across with this. Um, something that's really cool that we do. Maybe you actually would rather talk about it. Uh, yeah, I think I know he's doing it. Um, so. The whole architecture here, we, we're saying backend, we, we compiled everything that actually runs the conversions as a library. So if you can, you can write a separate front end for our library, and it'll just be able to do everything our library can do. You can call other converters, and um, you can write plugins for that as well. So the whole GUI just compiles completely separately in Qt, and then just calls the backend. So that's what he's talking about. We encourage people to write uh, front ends for us. Yeah. <laughs> we're just kind of straightening that out, the last details of that. but. You can write it for. You can convert anything in like ten lines. So. Yep. And again, the whole the whole reason we're writing this is to leverage the open source community that already exists. So instead of going back and reinventing the wheel and converting, writing a bunch of converters that already exist, we're going to put all of them in one place so that you can just convert anything uh, with one 
program. And one of the reasons that's really helpful is when you later start doing things like context menu integration, which we'll start talking about later, you can just right click on something with one program in a menu, you can just say convert to, you'll have another list that pops out, and you'll be able to say whatever. And that'll be one program that runs through all of that so you don't have to have a bunch of different context menu uh, uh, you know, entries for different programs. It also means if you're supporting, if you want to create a new format and you were making a converter, you don't have to like go write it in C. Like we have, um, I wrote a backend support using Microsoft Office to do conversions. It's written in C sharp, linked against like .NET, <laughs> but but that's fine because it's you only really have Microsoft Office on Windows anyway. Um, so the idea is that you then write your backend in whatever you want and it's native because we're just calling a calling a program. So as long as you can write a standalone program in your language, you can use it. So, so we've made a lot of improvements. Like it says, cleaner, faster, and better. Uh, our last presentation was last semester, um, probably halfway through the year. It was a long time ago. And we've made a lot of progress since then. Uh, back then it was buggy, it would crash, it didn't really work. Um, we've added a lot of significant features that make things just work better in general. Um, one of the uh, significant <coughs> features is if you're on Linux and you don't have MP3 support compiled into your FFmpeg, for instance, um, and it, tries, it, it says it can do that, it'll try to call it and it'll just fail. Um, so now it actually can ask the program what it can do and then use re uses regular expressions to parse it out and it will only add things that it can actually do. So uh, that makes that a lot more stable. That's one of the improvements we did. Um, we also improved plugin loading a lot by we multi-threaded it out. It, it now will load everything in parallel. Um, and it will add uh, functionality into it as the plugins load, so the GUI will come up right away, and you'll just add, functionality will add as things uh, get sorted out. Which actually, in, in actuality, that happens instantaneously. Um, it's not like you have to sit there and wait for the functionality to load. It will happen right away. But if you ever have a bunch of stuff, and it, it was a just-in-case kind of thing, so if it grows exponentially and you have a lot of different plugins, it will never lag the GUI. Um, and we have a lot of, speaking of the GUI, we have a lot of GUI improvements, which John has been working on primarily. Yeah, so my domain can with this project is in our Qt GUI. A uh, bunch of new features now. Uh, this is not actually in the GUI exactly, but uh, context integration. So right click anything, convert to convlot, and it'll start up in the GUI for you. But that's just a random thing. A uh, bunch of the GUI stuff I'm just going to show you in the demo, so I'm not even going to talk about it right now. Uh, we do support internationalization. Uh, Frank, sort of uh, yeah, we have UTF-8. Um, I tried using a different encoding for really no reason other than multi-byte can be confusing. But we have UTF-8 now, and it's being consolidated into one class in the program, so it might become easy to switch to if we want to move to a different encoding. But you should be able to convert files in with strange characters now. Here to be strange to us. <coughs> uh, this is just a screenshot of the GUI. Um, again, we're going to do a demo in a second to uh, actually go through how everything works, and hopefully it all will work. We did a lot of work in the last couple of weeks to just working on stability, so it won't crash. Um, yeah. Except for in one specific case that I'm going to fix soon. <laughs> this is a screenshot of the command line version. Um, I don't expect you to read that. It, it just <laughs> show that it yeah. does work. Um, and then this is actually to other open source developers, this is what you don't want to do. Um, the reason, you use git source control for a reason, so that you have a clear backup of everything that you've done. You can roll back. And so we were working frantically trying to get something done for when we were supposed to present last week. And we were, uh, we, we had granted some git problems just all of a sudden. Didn't know why. So John decided to email me yeah. a change so Started I could stick it in really fast. Passing this is what you don't want to do. Yeah, this wasn't recently. This was very long ago. <laughs> September 16th. It's really important to commit everything you do separately to Git because if you've made like three commits to break something and then one commit that's fixed, you can just you can cherry pick that commit into your main into your stable branch and just like fix the bug. But yeah, in there. So that, that when we say commit really good, every time you come up with something ever even slightly different, be sure to commit it right away and just like put a little description. Like it takes maybe 30 seconds to make a commit and It'll save you a lot of time later. 
So we have a lot of plans for the future. Uh, we, want, we want to finish the context menu integration. That's actually pretty hard. That might take a long time to get working right. Because um, it actually has to store a database of what we can convert. And it has to be real-time updating. So as you install new plugins and get more functionality, uh, it will update and reflect that in the context menu. Um, we have to finish advanced options. Now, one thing with these conversion tools, you don't necessarily have a perfect conversion from one format to the other, and there's a bunch of flags that we pass into these programs that we're calling that will change how well or you know what kind of settings, like the bit rate um, if, if for MP3s, for instance, um, like how it's going to convert it. Um, our program has good defaults right now, so it'll, it'll get you good quality things when you convert around, but you can't change them as of now. And this is also a really hard problem that we've been working on for a long time. It also brings up a lot of philosophical questions with how we should do things that we've been discussing for a long time. Uh, we do have a lot of back-end code written for it, and we've started a GUI for it, um, which doesn't work, but we're working on it. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of other complex cases, like if you're converting a big file, it could just sit there for a long time. And we don't really get a progress notification to show the user with how far it is along. And you know, we get to the halting problem where we can't tell if it's going to return or not. If the program we call it crashes, there's no way for us to know. So we're handling that, as it turns out, just by allowing the user to be able to cancel it. And we're going to show a little timer saying how long it's been going. Um, and then we have to improve the GUI even more, uh, as we'll show later in the demo right now. So um, I guess I'll show the demo and then ask questions. Uh, OK, well, I'll explain what's going on uh, as we it. So basically, when we start up the program, you're going to see uh, your file system over here and your list of conversions over here. So when you add anything you want to add. Uh, so I, I have so my, my music folder with <coughs> all of these identical copies of Columba. Um, <laughs> so I can drag this over here. And an interesting thing just happened now. So it had, it had all the files in that folder. Um, but you notice it went to the video tab. Uh, so these tabs represent the input format, what you're trying to convert. They're also in the audio tab. So one thing that um, John was mentioning before, we can convert our flags to video because it will just write an AVI that's a black screen with the sound in it if you ever want to do that. Or on the other side, if you had an AVI with the soundtrack that you liked, you could strip it out. You could go to the uh, to audio, it would show your AVI file in here, and you could say convert to MP3, and you'd have the audio file from that, and you just do that. So I'm going to select the output format for these files, and I'll say, I don't know, Windows Media. No. Say convert. And this is one of the GUI improvements you'll notice. Uh, so it will highlight things it's currently doing as yellow. It does five at a time. When it finishes, it puts them green and then removes them after a little bit. Um, if there's an error, it'll highlight it red and then remove it after a little bit. And it, everything is logged in the bottom so that uh, you can see what's going on if you want to. Um, so some GUI improvements that we were going to do. Uh, the console should be, you should be able to hide that. Not everyone really cares about that. Um, we're also going to add a simple view. Uh, one thing that you can do with this is you can convert videos and music and images all at the same time, which is kind of cool, but you probably aren't going to be doing that most of the time. So we're going to add a simple view, which will essentially just show all of your files. And there won't be all this tab stuff. There'll just be an output. And you'll just add files, <coughs> convert to, whatever. And then it'll be in advanced if you want to see them. Um, and then the context menu integration, it's, it's, it's sort of there. I mean, you can. <laughs> thing. Well, uh, but uh, it doesn't add files yet, and there, there's some other issues. It does in the next. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. Cr cross platform. <laughs> so, uh, I guess with that, are there any questions? Um, if you're curious about the plugin architecture. Yeah. Uh, is there any particular rhyme or reason to the number five? Uh, five at a time? It's actually an adjustable value. We chose five because, um, I don't know. It's just not Apparently, I compiled on constant. Um, one of those three listings is eventually like, look at how many cores they have or something like that, but it was just sort of, we picked it. Um, our program itself is, is basically no load. So it, it's basically entirely determined on how much of your system the converter is able to utilize, which is a whole big complicated problem in itself. Like FMPEG will we'll do the multi-threaded for many video types, but for many of the, there's also converters that aren't multi-threaded. So how do we decide? Like they, they, it's sort of a compile, it basically it's a compile time constant because we haven't decided a uh, better way yet. So, like, yeah. Sure. Well, regarding that, would that be mostly just an I.O. bound operation? So it depends. Um, for a lot of, I mean, mostly you just read conversion files. Video conversions are generally CPU bound. Okay. Um, it, 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 yeah, basically, 
it's entirely dependent on the on what we're converting and what converter we're using to do it. So. Sorry. <laughs> um, is it aware of lossless? So it will try to avoid yes. converting. Yes. Converting to lossless. Yes, we have a lossless. special. Um, yeah, that, that's actually one of the few things that we treat specially right now is that formats can be lossless or lossy, and when it's determining the shortest path, it will prefer lossless to over lossy nodes whenever possible. And it, I believe, it sh takes a longer path if it's lossless than if it, it goes. Yeah. It'll take. It'll take. Do the fewest lossy steps, basically, even if that requires going through more lossless steps. Uh uh, I should probably clarify that. We can do um, a chain of conversions. If you can convert from wave to MP3 and MP3 to AUG, but not directly from wave to AUG, it will go to MP3 first and then it will go to AUG. And it will handle all that for you. So unconventional conversions are very easy now and require massively less Google. Do you guys allow people to go from lossless to lossy? Can I take 128 kilobits MP3 and make a flack out of it and distribute yes. it to my friends? Yes. <laughs> it's a really awesome now, music file. Yeah, well, that's one of those things. Like, we haven't really gotten into that yet. I mean, obviously, that isn't really particularly sensible because you don't get more quality. But we haven't really, we've sort of been focusing on the, like, just getting everything nice and working. Because, like, things like, we currently lose, I, we currently lose, like, metadata tags. Like, if you have, like, ID3 tag in your MP3 file and you convert it to, like, AAC to put on your iPods, it's not going to have that metadata anymore if it went through Wave. Because Wave doesn't support that. So, that's sort of an odd, that's on our to-do list. And we're still trying to figure out how to fix that because we've had, di we're, we've had discussions over yeah. whether we should treat it specially or how, how, whether we should support multiple converters for a single file or how we're going to handle it. But, does it come with converters, or does it tell you where to download them? Or? That is a very big problem. So for licensing issues, we can't just bundle people's stuff for converters. We'll get sued by uh, makers of MP3 or whoever. So we're yeah, trying to figure out a good way to actually give them this. And, uh, as of now, it'll probably be we'll just say, go download Image Magic, which actually comes with that in peg. So right out of the box, you'll get audio, images, and uh, video conversions. It's less of a problem on Linux, because we can just have pack we can just build a Linux package. Like the uh, a bunch of packages that uh, recommends the other converters, recommends the converter package that we, so that you can just like pull them in. But um, yeah, basically we can't we can't sell an MP3 encoder without owing money to the people who own the MP3 patents. Or and by sell, we can't even like make it free for that one without technically owing them money. And so we've been avoiding that. We've done that. Sir.